Ah, the time-honoured playground game of who would win in a fight between. So many youthful friendships abandoned to hair-pulling dirt wrestles over whether or not the Enterprise D could take the Death Star in a straight fight, and then those same kids grow up nursing resentments, become video game developers and create things like Mortal Kombat vs DC Universe, in which we learn that yes, Sub-Zero could beat up Superman if they're in an incredibly contrived situation that makes things remotely fair, and if Superman is being controlled by your mum. Or they create those pseudoscience TV shows like Deadliest Warrior, in which we learn that yes, obviously a ninja would win against a pirate because a ninja is a trained assassin and a pirate is a drunk sailor with an at best slightly intimidating beard, and it's the spirit of Deadliest Warrior that brings us Ubisoft's latest multiplayer-focused Skinner box, Foreigner. So called because it's about how people of different races and creeds will never ever get along under any circumstances. Specifically, it concerns a permanent three-way conflict between medieval knights, medieval vikings, and, uh, Japanese samurai. Which from a geographical perspective is kinda like King Leonidas and the 300 Spartans showing up to join in the Falklands conflict. Whatever, it's a fantasy. Three communities of knights, vikings, and samurai all live within five minutes drive of each other, and they smack the shit out of their neighbours all day because it's easier than learning the Norwegian region for stop kicking your ball over my fence. The story campaign reveals that this state of affairs was engineered by some weird messianic lady with a slightly Darwinian vision for a world composed only of great warriors, like Warhammer 40k but without the irony, inviting the same argument that you can't have a world that's only war because at the end of the day you'll still need someone to cook dinner and resharpen all the pointy sticks. The story campaign is about as much as one could expect from something hacked together by Ubisoft's D team to support a chunky melee combat engine masquerading as a complete multiplayer experience. You go through three chapters of six missions apiece in which the knights invade the vikings, the vikings invade the samurai, and then the samurai I invade the knights. Everyone stays really cross at each other and nothing of value or meaningful impact happens. In each chapter you play as the current community's winner of the most generic dude contest, respectively Mr. Warden, Mr. Raider, and Orochi-san, and each mission is a handful of generic sword fights with bots connected by story moments that play like scenes from a Klingon soap opera directed by a narcoleptic mole. Why do we fight? Long pause, awkward stare. We fight because we are warriors! Characters shuffle around a bit like they didn't entirely memorise their cues. Valhalla! Characters standing either side of us eventually figure out they're supposed to be joining in. The campaign also provides the opportunity to find some hidden collectibles, because a Ubisoft game without meaningless collectathons would be like Catholic sex education without the guilt. So frankly they should have swapped out the single player experience for a packet of cream eggs I could eat while watching Sex in the City in my pants as I stew in loneliness. Fuck it though, if you want a single player sword and sterilization sim then you already know what I'd recommend. It starts with a D and rhymes with lark bowls. For cosmetics is a multiplayer game, bitch. I know, because before I did anything else I had to pick which of the three factions I belonged to. Seemed a bit forward to ask me to pick before I'd gotten to know any of them or how they played, but I needn't have worried. Which faction is the best? The shouty overdramatic cunts with the slow but strong one, the fast but weak one, inevitably the lady, and the in-betweeny one, or the other two groups of shouty overdramatic cunts with the etc etc. Oh but there are subtle differences in what special moves the individual characters can pull off, like there's that one samurai with the pokey poison spear, whose special move is to go fuck themselves. But it still doesn't actually matter which faction you pledge allegiance to because you can play as any character you want. You can join the knights and be the pokey poison spear samurai and fuck yourself all night long if you want, which does rather raise the question of why we have to pick a faction at all. And it turns out it is for no reason, except to artificially segregate us as part of Ubisoft's masterful scheme to spread the seeds of conflict and disunity so that we stop getting together to complain about their sandbox games all being shit now. But let me talk about the actual combat since that's what it all boils down to. You've got your standard light attack and heavy attack for mopping up the groundlings, but the moment you target someone serious it switches rather neatly into a one on one fighter. Use the right hand log stick to point your sword to the left, to the right or overhead, you'll attack from that angle and block any attacks coming in from that angle. So you can wobble back and forth eyeing each other trying to decide when to strike or to feint until one of you gets bored and uses the kick button for a free hit, and if you're not sure what angle your enemy is at from say the look of the massive great sword they're holding which you can't look away from because the camera's locked, then the interface helpfully displays big fucking arrows across the screen like you're playing Dance Dance Revolution. I hate when an interface fucks with the immersion like that unnecessarily, and while there is the option to turn it off, you know there are a lot of other players who haven't, and I'm worried if they had an advantage they might get the false impression that they're better than me and not jammy cheating scrubs. But all in all it's a nice 1v1 dueling engine. Just a shame nobody fucking plays the 1v1 dueling mode because they're all in the 4v4 utterly bog standard territory control mode. See, the essence of an honourable battlefield duel is lost when at any moment your opponent's mate might run in on your flank and shove a spear down your ear. So the 4v4 matches become less about dueling skill and more about who can run off and fetch their big brother first. The trouble with 4 you play achievements is that it's one interesting core gameplay mechanic surrounded in padding. Micromanaging equipment and cosmetics and passive buffs and ooh if you're very good maybe you could add 0.001% to your faction's chances of securing an imaginary territory before it arbitrarily resets next week. That's just drab number crunching in a drab setting, there's no personality to 4 boners. The character roster is 12 variants on a theme of armoured person who goes rawr a lot. There's no self-awareness of the let's face it inherently juvenile premise. And anyway, who would win in a fight is for two-way scenarios, and a three-way conflict is better resolved with shag marry kill. Personally, I'd shag the vikings, because it wouldn't take so long to get started. You'd spend half the evening working on a night with a can opener and that's just to figure out what gender they are.
My new book, Will Save the Galaxy for Food, is out now! It's a sci-fi comedy with all the usual sci-fi comedy themes, redundancy, hopelessness and existential dread. Available in ebook, paperback and audiobook from all good retailers and some dodgy ones.